Sketch constraints allow you to quickly and automatically, in most cases, limit the degrees of freedom in sketch or reference figures and have them automatically update. Sketch constraints can be applied to sketch figures and nodes. By default, sketch constraints are auto-implied. They are created and appear on geometry being sketched. This applies to reference geometry as well. The only exception is the coincident constraint, which is applied but never shown. Notice how the parametric feature makes short work of defining geometry and adding sketch dimensions. Sketch constraints may also be added manually wherever needed. This auto-implied behavior can be turned on or off by pulling down the sketch menu, selecting Snap and Constraint Settings, and checking Selected Constraints to turn them on, or unchecking to turn them off. These constraints are being turned off for a few moments so you can see the effect. When turned off, the constraint symbol will appear in black next to the cursor until the item is actually drawn. Notice the absence of the parallel constraint. Now the sketch constraints are all set back to auto imply mode. Once again, the sketch constraints are applied automatically. Holding down the control and shift keys will override auto implied sketch constraints. When grid snap is active, holding down the control and shift keys will override the grid snap until you release them. Please keep in mind, however, that grid snap is independent of the grid and is not affected by the grid being on or off. The grid is on here so you can see where the grid snap points are located. In this case, they happen to be coincident with the grid line intersections. Auto implied sketch constraints work well with arcs and circles, in this case, helping to identify a point of tangency with a horizontal line not in contact with the circle. The parametric feature is used here to quickly create a dimensioned 4 inch circle, and the two circles are made concentric to each other with a concentric sketch constraint. Nodes can be constrained vertically or horizontally to each other. These two are vertically constrained. They now move together horizontally. Moving these corners together shows the coincident sketch constraint in action. Once the two endpoint nodes are in contact, they remain so. The coincident sketch constraint can be overwritten by moving items with the Control and Shift keys held down. To delete a sketch constraint, while in Select mode, move the cursor over the constraint icon. When the same icon appears in black, just to the lower right of the mouse cursor, right-click and select Delete from the pop-up menu or press the Delete key on your keyboard. 